Welcome everyone to Money Mondays with Melissa. We have a few quick housekeeping items to cover before we begin. The first of which is to let you know that we are recording today's event, which will be made available for viewing on demand. Everyone who registered to attend will receive an email with the link after the conclusion of today's town hall meeting. All participant lines are muted, so if you're having any technical issues, please use the chat feature to let us know and we'll try to assist you. We encourage you to use the same chat feature to submit any questions or comments you have during today's presentation. You can submit your questions at any time. We'll collect them and try to address as many as possible during that portion of the town hall. Any questions that we're unable to get to will be shared with Treasurer Conyers, Irv, and staff who will follow up with you by email. Madam Treasurer, I'll now turn it over to you. Good afternoon, everyone. I am trying something different today. I was just telling everyone I wanted to do this from outside. So I am at a different location today trying to enjoy this beautiful weather and conduct our Money Mondays with Melissa. Um, I just feel great being outside. So thank you everyone for joining us. That's the great part about webinars, right? We can like do this anywhere. I'm, I think this is all kind of cool. Um, but first I just want to um, just acknowledge this incredibly painful past couple of weeks that we have had um, through our city and of course our entire and we have all felt shattered by the killing of Mr. George Floyd in Minneapolis and really have watched as demonstrators took to the streets all over the country and really even the world to express their pain. And it's just, you know, Money Mondays with Melissa, we, we thought about this and it was really created um, with the rise of COVID-19 and we wanted to help small businesses and individuals cope with the unprecedented financial challenges that was brought on by COVID-19. But now we are experiencing two crises at the same time. And so we think about COVID-19 as it continues to ravage throughout our country, especially Black communities and small businesses are working to rebuild um, their business after really what happened this past week. So really just as I stand with peaceful protesters who have been exercising their rights and demanding change in a system that really perpetuates unequal justice, you know, I stand with those small businesses that have been impacted through this crisis. And as many of you all know too well, the inequities in our country are not limited to the justice system. They are deeply embedded in economic and financial systems too, which is why I am just grateful that I can use the platform as city treasurer to help with platforms such as this, Money Mondays with Melissa, so that we can talk about the road to recovery. Really, where do we go from here? The next steps in the fight for financial equity. And this is actually going to be part one of our series. And as always, we have brought in resources and important voices that are leading the way. And today I am pleased to welcome our three special guests who have unique perspectives to share. And I think we're all going to learn a lot out of our panel on today. So let's welcome Illinois State Representative Cam Buckner from Illinois 26th District. Thank you, Representative Buckner, for being with us on today. And, and then we also have um, from the Illinois Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, please welcome CEO Jaime de Pablo Palo. Thank you, madam. Thank, you so Thank you for being here with us on today. And finally, please welcome, last but certainly not least, mm -hmm. Janet Ruiz, who is Director of Strategic Communications from the Insurance Information Institute. Janet, thank you so much for joining us on today. Thanks for having us. All right. So let's just jump in and we're going to utilize this hour. This is, our, this is our power hour during the day where we take the break and kind of conduct this webinar so that we can provide helpful resources. So I'm going to start with you, Representative Buckner, because I think that it's actually important to kind of talk about what has happened in recent weeks. Now, I had the pleasure of working with you for a short period of time. When I was in the legislature, um, you were coming in. I was kind of leaving at the time, I believe, running for office. Um, but certainly of the small time that I was 
work with you. I was very impressed with the work that you've done. And I also know that it did not just start at the legislature. You have had a history of working on behalf of the community. And so when we think about what has happened the last couple of weeks, and um, it's like some people, it, it has really been a wake up call. When you look at the demonstration that black people face, these have just been demonstrations of what black people face every day. Um, some of which you've spoken about publicly over the past month. And I don't know if a lot of people know this, but you were stopped by a police officer while wearing a mask because of COVID-19, of course, which we're supposed to do by law, which is, you know, so you're wearing the mask, adhering to the law, but yet you were stopped. And that officer asked you to see the receipt of the store that you had just left and told you that you looked like you were up to something. I don't, I don't really know what that means. What is the connection between that kind of discrimination and the economic injustices that Black communities experience? Yeah, well, well, first, Madam Treasurer, thank you for, for having us and, and giving us this, this opportunity and this platform to speak about these things that are extremely important to all of us. Um, I'm so glad that, that, that we're talking here about the connectivity between um, you know, racial injustice and economic injustice and what that looks like. Um, you know, we, we, we can't forget that, that uh, economics plays a huge part uh, in the racism and the injustice that we see around this country. Um, economics is, is why black folks were brought to this country in the first place. Right? Um, and and we, 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 can't, um, we, can't, we can't, you know, highlight that enough as we talk about where we are as a country. You know, we, we look at the uh, demonstrations and the protests that are going on around the country. This was just about police brutality. This was just about law enforcement. Um, then it would only be folks burning down police stations, right? But people, people um, are, are trying to dismantle a, a system that has in, inherently been, been uh, against uh, you know, black folks for, you know, since, since the beginning. Um, the Emancipation Proclamation ended slavery, but it did not end maltreatment. We know that, um, you know, black Americans are steered, steered into costlier home and auto loans. We know that we get worse health care um, than other folks. And we know that, um, you know, just economically, we, we are, we continue to be depressed economically. And we talk a lot about, uh, you know, generational wealth, but we have not had the, the conversations about generational poverty. And that's what racism has done uh, to, to black folks in this country. I'm like, yes, so much. I didn't even press mute. I'm mute. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so the demonstrations, um, Jamie, let, I can kind of move to you, CEO. Um, the demonstrations and unrest in the past week following the the killing of Mr. George Floyd. And every time I mention his name, it's, it's just touching, right? It touched so many neighborhoods in Chicago, including predominantly Hispanic neighborhoods where businesses sustain losses. What are you hearing from those business owners in communities like Little Village and Pilsen about how their companies have really weathered this storm? Well, first of all, thank you so much for having us. Uh, I really, truly appreciate the opportunity to give us a forum to speak out, you know, uh, and, and address this important issue that affects not just the African American community, but every minority business out there. Uh, and we share your grief. Trust me, uh, what I'm hearing from my members, we're with you, and we will be with you with the African American community all the way, because somehow this affects all minority businesses especially in communities like Little Village, Pilsen, Back of the Arts, uh, and Humble Park, where there were some issues, potential r racial tensions going on because of the infamous gangs, right? So I think we, we finally, the, the, the uh, elected officials came out during the weekend and, and did the right thing, calling this out and, and really supporting what the issue is, which is racism against minority communities. And uh, so having said that, business owners, we are in the rebuilding mode. Uh, the, this COVID has really impacted our businesses and not just the Hispanic business, any business, especially minority businesses. So, and this was just a harsh thing to swallow. This, this what happened, you know, this, this uh, looting and all these things, but we understand the issues and we are 100% behind the, the, the movement. So thank you so much.
again, just talking without the unmute. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, CEO. And you know, I'm going to go into the money part of this webinar. And so Director Ruiz, that's where you come in. And so let, let's talk about that because a lot of businesses were affected and um, some small business owners truly just don't know where to go. Um, some of them have insurance and some of them have spoken with their agent, but really talk to us about, um, you know, will most business owners find their losses are covered by insurance? And that's something that I, I believe a lot of small business owners are still trying to figure out. So can you talk to us a little bit about that, Director Ruiz? Thank you, Madam Treasurer. Yes, um, small businesses are that have a business owner's policy do have coverage for riot and civil commotion. Uh, so the important thing to do is to assess what's going on at your business and get in touch with your insurance company to find out how to get going on the recovery and get those claim payments quickly. And so what, what do you suggest as the first step? So the first step is to contact your insurance company and they've made it even more easy throughout this whole time of staying at home. There's a lot more virtual contact that can be made. Uh, take photos of the damage, uh, clean up, keep your receipts from cleanup so that you can get reimbursed for those expenses. But again, contact your insurance company, whether it's by phone or on the computer, et cetera, uh, so that you can get the process started and start that road to recover quickly. And Director Ruiz, um, I should have disclosed that my background is actually in insurance. <laughs> And actually, most of my corporate experience has been in insurance. And so I think you brought up a valid point about the, the keeping of receipts, um, especially for the cleanup. A lot of people do not realize that that is a part of the claim as well. And a lot of people come out of their pocket to purchase supplies, to even pay for labor to help right. with cleanup and not realizing that that is something that can be covered by the insurance if that is covered. Um, I think that plenty of pictures also is a really valid point. But I wanted to ask, you know, a lot of times people think that insurance is in the business of not paying. And I know that there's been so many questions, even people have asked me, you know, will their insurance cover it and, and et cetera. Um, and I know that certainly if they contact their insurance company, that they will kind of let them know what type of policy that they have. But overall, what are you hearing, at least as far as the temperature of insurance companies? Mm -hmm. Obviously, it depends on your policy, but just overall, can you kind of give us a temperature? Yes, overall, um, it is a covered loss. And while we have not seen um, uh, riot and civil commotion in so many cities all at the same time across the country, uh, the insurance industry has reserves and surplus money that we keep uh, just for catastrophe and to pay in these situations. So the insurance, um, the insurance market has the money to pay the claims and this is a covered loss under uh, business policies. So uh, it will respond and it will respond quickly. Uh, we do prepare for catastrophe in that way as well so that we have adjusters on standby. Again, using some of the virtual means that we have now, you can send photos back and forth. Um, you know, when the time is right, the adjusters will be out and I expect that'll be in the next week or so, uh, but they can get the process started before that. But again, um, you bring up a great point uh, that this is a covered loss, it's written uh, right on the front of your policy, uh, right next to fire, riot and civil commotion are covered. Um, and again, you know, keeping your receipts for those uh, expenses that you're incurring right now will make a big difference uh, in your recovery because you want to get that money for those uh, repairs, et cetera. Absolutely. And really, this is a time, this is why you have insurance 
you know, for times such as this, where you as the business owner, you know, when you think about the pandemic of COVID-19, we've already experienced hardship. And then on top of that, you know, it's, it's good that you do have insurance that can come in and help in times such as this. Um, so thank, thank you, thank you. And CEO Di, Di Paolo, did I say that right? Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. <laughs> so for the past 30 years, um, the IHCC has worked to increase opportunities for Hispanic entrepreneurs in Illinois and Chicago. 30 years is a long time, by the way usually um, to get them lunch, to help them grow, and now you're looking at helping to rebuild. What kind of resources are available to small businesses that have been impacted um, really through COVID-19 as well as the recent crisis with the killing of Mr. Floyd? Uh, thank you for that question, uh, Madam Treasurer. Uh, there's a lot of resources that still left out there. In fact, they, everybody's heard of the PPP the Payment Protection Plan. As of Friday, there was $100 million left in that fund. So if you have a small business, if you have not applied for that fund, you're missing out on an opportunity to bring your employees back and, and, and get the money forgiven if, if you use it for payroll reasons for two and a half months. So that's one opportunity. And there's several, thanks to leadership like uh, uh, Representative Buckner, there's many, there's many resources in the state available to help businesses survive. Uh, there's a lot of grants left out there. Uh, and there, there's private money, there's private foundations. For example, Google, Verizon, and several foundations have put out RFPs to help small businesses survive. And I'm talking small businesses, you know, under 20 employees. Because in the United States, uh, small businesses consider a business under 500 employees. Well, in our communities, small businesses is under 20 employees. We, we see a 500, you know, company, uh, a company that has 500 employees as a large company. But in the eyes of the SBA, they're considered small businesses. So that's the reason why the, the big shebang and the first round of PPP went to the bigger companies that have available to their means, a CPA on hand that can help them with the, with the paperwork and submit it to the bank, right? A small business in our communities don't have that luxury. So that's why it's very important organizations like ours, the role we play in helping support the small businesses access those funds. So when the PPP number two came out, just to put it in shorter words, we were ready for that. So all the chambers around the state gather up and actually help smaller businesses access those, that capital, which is was key. And so we've been doing that lately. And, and now the plan is the, what's, what's after the money? How are you gonna use the money to, to rescue yourself? Because you know, at the, at the end of the day, when a customer is gone, the customer is gone for whatever reason. So you have to, as a business, you have to have the right plan to bring that customer back. So we are implementing a statewide effort in, in collaboration with other agencies, a technical assistance type of thing. So we're gonna go out there and actually consult with small businesses on one-on-one -on -one basis and how to help them uh, reopen, how to help them plan, how to get the financials together, how to get the marketing plan together, how to get the, the, you know, the policies and procedures together because we're gonna to have to reinvent ourselves somehow. So, there's a lot of money coming down the pipe, especially from the state. They just released a fund of $7 million to, for small business development centers that the ICC is one of those grantees. So we are happy to, to get that money so we can get it into the hands of our businesses. So that's what we've been doing. So thank you for that question. One thing that I wanted to piggyback on, something that you said, CEO DiPaolo, is that there is still money available through the federal right. payroll protection program. And I think that the reason I want to reiterate that is because so many businesses were discouraged with what happened in the first round. And because of that, as you mentioned, some small businesses were looked over in the first round. And unfortunately, we saw like large franchises that received the assistance, which was really a slap in the face. And so a lot of small businesses are discouraged and they did not want to apply again for this second round. 
but money is still available. And we do not want small businesses to think that it doesn't apply to them because it does. And the great part about the federal PPP program, which is PPP, when I, you know, payroll protection program, what's great about that is that it can be forgivable. And so it's possible that you would not owe to pay it back. And so that is so worth applying for, even if you did not receive it through the first round, you can still apply. And so we are going to make certain that we provide this information in the chat function. Um, but CEO DiPaolo, can people contact the chamber, the, um, the, uh, your chamber of commerce, if they have any questions or no, want to know how do they apply, et cetera? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we, as, as I said before, we are, we are uh, a small business development center. It's housed in our office. Uh, well, virtually right now. Uh, but we have the means to help anybody. You don't have to be Hispanic. You don't have to own up. You don't have to be a member of our chamber. We have the duty to serve everybody. So yes, we can help anybody that would like to have a question. We can actually, if they don't have a banking relationship, we can link them to a bank that's be happy to take their loan, their application so they can give the loan. Remember, there's a hundred million dollar left. We can we cannot let that one go. So yes, they can contact us. Uh, at, info at ihccbusiness.net and will somebody will get back to them uh, and the legislation to have a third round of ppp once this one's over it's called the the heroes act and and there there's a lot of there's a lot of forgiving opportunities for businesses too so we got to spend this money before the other one kicks in it's on the senate right now in washington and, and they're debating it so i'm sure it's going to be you know tweaked a little bit but this there's going to be some more more money available. So make sure, we got to make sure this, this second round of PPP, for lack of better words, is, is, is finished. There's, there's no more money left, so the other one kicks right in. And there's a lot. And just last week, the SBA announced that, that, that you, know, the, you had two and a half months to report. Well, now they extended that all the way to December. So you, you, you can, money can be forgiven even if you use it like in the next couple of months. So... It's free money for like if you use it the right way. So use it. And it's important why we have platforms such as this to talk about that. We want to get the word out. And so we're going to, from the treasurer's office, be providing and sending out emails and things for the contacts that we have. But there are so many businesses that we may not have contact with that we want those that are listening to this call. If you know any small business owners, please let them know that money is still available through the payroll protection program. And again, that can be a forgivable loan, which I think is extremely important. And small business, every small business should be trying to apply for that. Now, so, if, you're, if you're an Uber driver, if you file a 1099, you have access to this fund. Good point. Good if, point. If you're a sale proprietor, you have access to this funds. And not just the chamber provides you with the assistance. There's another one. There's an SPDC, a small business development center, or the Women Business Development Center. There's 40 centers around the state. So just Google small business development centers in Illinois, Illinois small business development centers, and, you, and you're going to find somebody in your area that's going to be able to assist you. And this is all thanks to the state. So thanks to the Representative Buckner that is key here, that helping funnel those funds so we can give the technical assistance. And someone was asking about SBA. Um, they, they would not... Um, they do not have to go through SBA to get this payroll protection program. Again, IHCC is a resource to help, but just about every chamber um, within the city of Chicago, and I know state of Illinois, of course, but I know chambers on the south side, north side, west side, southwest side that are providing this assistance. And so I would encourage those that are listening to try to Google their local chamber. And of course, again, CEO DePaulo De is on um, from IHCC and they are willing to help. We do not want this money to go back and we want this money to go towards the small businesses, especially in underserved communities. So yeah. thank you for that. And I, and I just saw communication that we've already sent several communications to the business owners for the contact list that we have, but again, we don't have everyone's contact information of all the business owners in Chicago. Only the ones that have reached out to us are the ones that we have been able to capture. So please spread the word on that. I can't stress that enough because 
you know, I'm a, I'm a Chicagoan. I'm born and raised in Chicago, and I know how hard it is for a lot of small business owners. Then so, even the BACP office there on the eighth floor in City Hall with Commissioner Rosa Escareño, they, they have relationships with just about every chamber in, in, in the city. And there's over 120 chambers of business organizations that have, you know, that's, that's what we do. And so we we're eager to help fill out those applications. It's very simple. All you gotta do is prove you, you pay people and that's it really. I mean, it's very simple, quick thing. You get, a, you get approved within a week and then you get your money. Good point. Good point. And like you said, BACP does have that information. And so um, I do want to go over to Representative Buckner right now, because one thing that I noticed when I was a um, state representative, I was like, oh, my good. The state legislature has such a huge effect on us as, as Illinoisans, as Chicagoans. And what we see in Chicago specifically I don't necessarily know outside of Chicago, but Chicago specifically, is that a lot of people focus on the aldermen, the city council, and not necessarily paying attention to legislation that is being passed in Springfield that affects us here. And we really got to get to what's happening in Springfield to truly help us here. And so I, I mean, really my experience in Springfield was an eye opener. I, I was just shocked and amazed at the importance of legislation and the importance of advocacy. We have so many advocacy groups. People may not know this, so I'm going to say it. So many advocacy groups that would come and visit us while we were in session in Springfield on a daily basis. Advocacy groups, you name it, they were there. But there are so many people that are not in touch with what, with what is going on in Springfield. And so I thought that it was important to have Representative Buckner on, not just because of his personal experience that, that he has, but also of the work that he is doing right now in Springfield. And so Representative Buckner, I want you to talk about um, resources that that we need, obviously, locally, we know that there's resources needed as a nation, but what you are doing to help locally. Now, you filed House Bill 3926, really in October, which is, a, which is impressive, which would amend the police and community, <coughs> excuse me, House Bill 3926, which would amend Police and Community Relations Improvement Act to ensure that in the event of an officer-involved death, there will be a special prosecutor appointed to investigate and prosecute if there's cause. And you're also working to amend the Illinois Criminal Justice Information Act. Can you tell us about those efforts and the status of them? Yeah, th thank you for that question. And, and, and Madam Treasurer, I know you know um, more, than, more than anybody uh, how important the, the work that we do on the ground in Springfield is to our cities. Um, and our municipalities around the state. Um, the, the things that happen uh, down in the Capitol, uh, you know, um, really it, it set the tone for how, how our, our schools get funded, uh, how our streets get paved, uh, how our hospitals um, receive money, right? And so we, um, you know, we, we can't take for granted how important those things are. Uh, you mentioned uh, HB 3926, which is something that I did, I filed uh, in October of 2019. Uh, and the, the thought process behind that was that, you know, in, in the event that uh, civilians are, are killed uh, by law enforcement, um, I wanted to take the, the onus away from, uh, you know, state's attorneys to, to prosecute those crimes, right? The state's attorneys have a, um, a, a hard job as it is, but, but prosecuting police officers who are probably some of their closest professional allies um, is, is problematic, right? And there's a, whether it's real or perceived, there is, um, there's a conflict of interest there. Um, and, and I know that, that the state's attorneys around the, around the, the state try to, to do that in as objective of, of a way as possible. Um, I'm an attorney as, as a member of the bar, we, we are, um, uh, you know, really focused on impartiality, right? But, uh, you know, that, that's a, that's a hard net to crack, right? And so what, what that, what that, uh, bill would do is, is just create an even playing field, an even cadence that whenever uh, a, a person is killed by a cop, that, that there's a special prosecutor um, involved. Um, you know, you may know that 
that myself, Representative Curtis Tarver, Representative Lamont Robinson have called for a special emergency session uh, in Springfield uh, immediately. And then we're, you know, talking with leadership about how that would look if, if we can actually get that done. Uh, because just like COVID, you know, this, this pandemic uh, of racism that, that we deal with, um, it's really um, cutting to the core of who we are as people. And we have to find ways to, one, create some accountability, um, and two, uh, from a financial point, uh, uh, from a financial standpoint, put the resources back in the community um, that they have been taken for a long time. We, we, we see what benign neglect looks like. We see what disinvestment looks like. Um, I have the pleasure of representing, you know, a very diverse district. I've got places like Washington Park and South Shore. I've also got the Gold Coast and River North. And we see the differences in these neighborhoods and, and what investment looks like. And so that's the work that we're doing on the ground in Springfield to try to even the playing field and make sure that we can move forward from this moment. And you're sitting down right now, Representative, but I was thinking about something. I was thinking about the first question, actually, as you were talking. And you're sitting down right now, so those that are um, looking at the webinar can, do not necessarily, can't really see everything, but you're a very tall, um, a strong build. I believe you're an, you were an athlete, right? You probably still are, but... Um, <laughs> You, you were an athlete, at, at least your build, um, it, I assume you were an athlete. I don't know all of your background, but um, you, it, is, it was interesting how the police officer has said you look like a, a suspect and, and certainly um, you representing the district that you do, which is the south side of Chicago, correct? I'm sorry, I, I, lost, I missed the last part of that. I'm sorry, Treasurer. Was it the south side of Chicago that you represent? Yeah, well, I, I represent, I go from South Shore up to the Gold Coast. So I've got, South Shore. Okay. Yeah, so about half, half, half South, half North. Okay. So yeah. certainly, you knowing on the South side of Chicago, and unfortunately, sometimes people um, are affected by a stereotype, and people may look at your physique and mm -hmm. think that, oh, that you, because you had a mask on, you weren't recognized, of course, and people may interpret that, that you could be a part of something that you are not, which is unfortunate. And so, of course, not just this recent experience, but it's interesting that you filed this legislation even back in October, but obviously you know firsthand even before this, pa this past month what you experienced, but you know firsthand what people that look like you experience every day. Right. Yeah, and, and, and honestly, uh, you know, uh, throughout my life, there have been instances where, where I've been profiled. And I, and I understand this, and I think the most intimate way possible um, to, to add to that, to contextualize it, uh, I, I am the son of a cop, right? I, I grew up in a, in a CPD uh, household and a, and a CPD family, all right? Um, but, I, but I also understand what the, um, what the realities are out here for, for, for folks who, um, who may look like me, right? And you know, when the incident happened with, with me in the beginning of May, uh, the thing that brought me to the next level to, to actually s uh, speak up and talk about it was that you know it seemed like a normal occurrence to me because I'm used to it. And then I thought about it, and and I I was uncomfortable that I was so comfortable with it, you know. And and that's uh, that's something that that really played in, into into why I, I brought this to the forefront. Thank you for that testimony. And also thank you for just acknowledging um, your family's background. And so it, it is just talking about accountability. I think that was an important word that you used. And it's not, it's not a one against the other. It's just talking about accountability. And I think Absolutely. that is very important. So, so thank you for using that word. And I, and I certainly do appreciate that. Um, so going back to you, Director Ruiz, um, Oh, I do want to ask one follow-up, Representative Buckner. Do you feel that when you think about legislation that you filed in October 2019, and when you look at what we're experiencing now, do you think that this is a turning point? I wanted to ask, what, what are you feeling? You know, you were just in Springfield for a special, it wasn't a special session, it's just that you all weren't able to come together with COVID-19, and, right. and then you were at the... Um, Bank of Springfield Center this past yep. month. Do you believe that this is a turning point? That, that's what I want to know. What are you feeling? I, I tell you what, uh, Treasurer, it, it, it feels different. It, it does feel like there that, that we may be at an, at an inflection point. Um, I've spent, you know, uh, you know, a lot of time over the last two weeks, I'll say, 
you know, on the streets in the community with people just talking about, you know, how they feel and talking about what's important to them. And this does feel a little different. It feels like we're, we're like we, we will not be returning to whatever quote unquote normal is. Um, you know, as far as you know, policy and and the, the the bill that I filed in October, I know you, you know this. You know, often we'll we'll file file stuff because we 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 understand the totality of our communities, right, and, and how things work. Um, but then we'll get told that you know certain certain bills won't you know that that'll never pass, right, or that's that's too provocative, or that's you know that's too radical. Um, and I was told that about about that bill, uh, but but fast forward, you know, seven eight months later, uh, and we have to have real conversations about that. So uh, one of the things that 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 I am trying to be intentional about is um, because I do think this is a turning point, is making sure that folks who have uh, who have said that they are allies uh, to to minority communities actually put their money where their mouth is. Um, you know, I always say, don't 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 tell me you love me, show me you love me. And for the folks who who have said that they are in this struggle uh, with minority communities, I need them to step up and to uh, embrace policies like this to make sure that we can move the needle and change our communities. Love it. I love it. You know what? Um, <laughs> I just get so excited on these Money Mondays, I'll tell you, because I was just thinking as you were talking, just how on this call right now, we're talking about so many things, right? We're talking about the the resources for small businesses. We have the um, the Chamber of Commerce, the IHCC on the line, and, and we have um, Director Ruiz on the line talking about the insurance. And then we have you talking about the legislation. I mean, this, this, is, this is what it's about. And this is the first part of our series talking about the road to recovery. Really for me, you know, how, what's the next step? Where do we go from here? And so I can appreciate the work that you're doing representative. And I'll, I'll tell those that are listening you know, the, the purpose of this, we want you to learn, right? When you get off this call, you should learn something you did not know before. And I cannot stress the importance of your state representative, your state senator, and the work that they do in Springfield that directly affects you. And we need to know that. And if you don't know who your state representative and state senator is, I would encourage you to Google it. You know, it's just that simple, right? You can like Google and you can enter your address and find out and get involved to know what it is that they're working on. And every district has a state representative and a state senator. So depending on where you live, it may not be Representative Buckner, but you have someone that is your state representative and state senator. So thank you very much, Representative. Um, I'm, I wanna switch over to you, Director Ruiz, now. Um, we hear a lot so, about you know, people comparing the events of last week to 1968 in terms of the sentiments and the anger. But how does this event compare to events of the past in terms of the losses that businesses have sustained? And also while you're answering that, I saw a question came up in the chat and you answered that. Thank you so much, Director Ruiz, for being prompt and answering about their insurance policy. And so we'll also kind of revisit that as well. Okay. Thank you, Madam Treasurer. And I just want to acknowledge that I so appreciate uh, Representative Buckner's comments on the turning point and maybe some of the differences. And, you know, the insurance industry is always kind of behind the scenes. Uh, helping people recover on the financial side. Uh, we kind of sometimes call ourselves financial first responders. And that's because um, in any tragic catastrophe, you still need money to recover. And so our mission and our, our uh, goal is to help people recover as quickly as possible. So, um, the difference in this is that the most costly uh, catastrophe that was riot and civil commotion that we've had, um, most of them occurred in the 1960s. And the most expensive one was the uh, Rodney King, 1992, uh, when the jury acquitted Los Angeles Police Department officers for using excessive force in the arrest and beating of Rodney King. Uh, this 
This event caused about $775 million in insured losses. So that's not the total amount of damage, but it's all the uh, businesses and homeowners, et cetera, that were insured. And in today's 2020 dollars, that would be about $1.4 billion. So what's going to be different about this is it's many cities across the entire nation. Uh, but again, as we talked about earlier, this is what the insurance industry prepares for so that we have the money to pay these claims. Um, and one of the questions that came up was a really good one. Um, they said they're hearing that some people had contacted their insurance company, some business owners, and um, uh, were told that maybe they didn't have coverage. Um, so two things here. One, it's really important when you talk to your insurance company, if you don't understand what they're telling you or you don't agree with it, you need to keep asking questions. And maybe you need to talk to a supervisor if that happens. The other thing that does come up sometimes in a situation like this is if you're renting and say the person that you're renting from, the building owner, only required liability insurance and that's all you purchase, then you might not have coverage for the physical damage uh, that happened to your uh, business. But uh, most people who do buy business insurance policies buy a package policy and that would cover property damage. And again, we talked earlier that riot and civil commotion is a covered loss under standard business policies. So I hope that's helpful. That is very helpful. And you mentioned about, you know, Sometimes I know small business owners and even residents, when you file an insurance claim, you kind of take what that adjuster is providing to you and you think, oh, there's, you know, there's nothing else I can do. So I want to talk about two things. Number one, if you're denied. Number two, if the amount that you received you felt was not sufficient. So number one, if you were denied, I think that Director Ruiz brought up a valid point. Be certain, you don't have to stop there. Ask to speak with the supervisor. And also, if um, you felt that the estimate was not enough, you don't have to just take it and walk away. You need to ask questions. Let's suppose that um, if I go and get the work done and this estimate that you have provided, I can't get the work done for this within this amount, what do I do? You need to ask the adjuster, you need to ask the manager. And lastly, and I know Dir Director Ru Ruiz, you're ready to jump in because you know all of this stuff is, is, is just, what people need to know, but also um, understand that after you've done all that you can through the insurance company, we also have the, the Illinois Department of Insurance that we can go to if we feel that we need further assistance and we're not receiving the help that we need from the insurance company director. That is such a good point. And the uh, Illinois Department of Insurance will take your complaints, they will investigate it and make sure that it's handled properly. But before you even go to that, I just can't um, say it enough times, ask questions. Uh, maybe you didn't give them all the information that they needed to make a good evaluation or assessment. Um, it's always challenging because you've just gone through a very difficult time. Uh, not only if your uh, business was uh, damaged during the riots, but also dealing with COVID-19. Uh, so this is a historic time that we're dealing with. So it's natural to be upset and maybe not as organized as you would always be. So take the time to ask the questions and think of your insurance company as an actual resource to you. Uh, because they can actually help you get through this. Uh, we deal with catastrophe, whether it be something like the riots or, you know, hurricane, wildfire, tornado, etc. So we, we do this on a regular basis and we really do want to pay your claim and we really are here to help you. 
one thing I want to piggyback on because I want to get back to Representative Buckner, but something you said about really in today's time, you shouldn't even have to get to the Illinois Department of Insurance. Um, what your concerns are should be reconciled with the, with the um, insurance firm that you have. And obviously that is the best bet. You, you want to make certain that you are working with the insurance company and, and Illinois Department of Insurance should only have to come in if you're at a point of no resolve. That's what I certainly would say. Would you agree, Director? Yes, I think that's a really good point and I appreciate you making it because uh, there are solutions and you know sometimes it's just a matter of getting the right information across. Uh, you'll be doing inventory so again that's why taking pictures and you know if for those businesses that weren't affected by this particular event, um, this is why it's good too to make a business continuity plan ahead of time uh, mm -hmm. because then it's going to be easier to respond. Uh, hopefully you have inventory information and receipts, etc. And if it's all online, um, it's going to be easier to give that information to your insurance company, uh, which you will be asked for. And again, uh, just really use them as a resource and ask those questions. Awesome. And Representative Buckner, after our um, last question, a lot of people asked about what was the House Bill number. So thank you for providing that House Bill 3926. And actually, I, I was thinking as I was looking at another question, which made me come back to you, people were asking about what about other things that we need in our communities, not only small businesses, but thinking about this series of the road to recovery. And I know that specifically even the um, Black Caucus and Hispanic Caucus has done a lot um, as far as providing, helping with the food deserts, um, with agriculture and things that have been provided and in legislation that you all have been initiating um, in regards to um, food deserts and even the legislation you have provided in relation to um, police brutality. But also one of the things I was thinking about, Illinois has so many resources that a lot of people do not even know. We had um, Kristen from Ida, Kristen, I believe it was Kristen, not Kirsten, I believe Kristen from Ida the other week, um, De Illinois Development Housing Authority. And she spoke about resources that were available to homeowners, et cetera. Can you kind of talk to us about just resources that you can provide there's so much but resources that you can provide information on that may help with small businesses or individuals that you think is um something that we should be mentioning on this call yeah um i know director de Paolo talked a little bit about some of the the money that has come from the state that is available to you know small businesses and folks um so so that's there um and i and i, I will say that the, the the latino caucus and the black caucus are working in concert to um, to push the Prisker administration to make sure that they continue to be committed uh, to providing funds in these communities that have been left behind. Um, you know, a lot of that money is going to come from the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, uh, DCEO, uh, as we call it. Um, and, and, you know, there, there are going to be uh, pots of money in, in other places around the state uh, to be able to, um, to, I think, positively affect some of the financial situations that many of our neighborhoods are going through. You know, um, you know, I can uh, send you a, a put a link on the, on the chat to some of the, the the resources that my office has compiled, um, and we're happy to to walk through folk walk folks through um, you know what those resources are and, and the process uh, to to get some of those dollars. Um, but what, but I I would be remiss if I didn't say say this, Madam Treasurer. I, I think that um, we have a real opportunity here to to shift the paradigm. We have a real opportunity to to change the the narrative and elevate the conversation. And you know, I, I'm not interested in going back to quote unquote normal, right? Because norm, normal was problematic, right? Normal is part of the reason that we're here uh, in this situation the way we are right now. Um, but you know, not creating a state or a city or a community uh, the way that it used to be, but giving us a chance to be the the state that we've always deserved to be. And I think that we can do that through um, this, you know, this tumultuous time. But we, we can take this and, and turn this into positive energy. To, to fix uh, what's wrong about us. Yes, that is awesome. And 
I think that what you just mentioned, Representative, going back to CEO um, DiPaolo's point, the, the chambers, our local chambers, they not only work a lot with our city partners, they work with our, they work with our state partners. And I think that that's an important bridge for residents and small businesses to be able to really work with our chambers, local chambers. And I'm glad. It seems like every week we've had um, a representative from a local chamber that have really been kind of helping us through this process and, and talk with us. So I'm glad we have CEO DiPaolo on the phone, as well as State Representative Buckner to kind of talk through that partnership. And it really does overlap and is information that both our state representative and senators, as well as our chambers can provide. So good point on that. Um, I will, I, I do wanna ask you a question, CEO DiPaolo, because someone was asking about what about businesses that are not able to open right now um, because of whether their business has, has, has suffered a loss or whether the business from COVID-19 pandemic has not opened as of yet. Let's talk a little bit about the, the payroll protection program. They can still apply for that even right now. And then the second question is, um, actually, I think I'm gonna go to you, Director Ruiz, after that, because I wanna ask an insurance question about businesses that are not open. So let's start with you, CEO DePaulo. Yes, thank you for that. But yes, uh, I encourage you to apply. Uh, uh, you know, it's money, you, it's, it's, it's money, it's, for, it's, a, it's a loan. At the end of the day, it's a loan, but it can be forgiven if you use it for payroll. So if, you, if, you, if you're not open yet, you, you can still use it for payroll once you open and, and be able to report that money to be forgiven up to December. The, the, the Senate just passed that this past week, the last week. So I encourage you to apply, uh, you know, just talk to your banker. The bankers are the ones in charge of helping you filling up your application. Uh, you, you, you know, whatever you bank with, uh, they should be able to help you. If not, uh, send us an email, give us a call, or approach any small business development center around the state, and they should be able to recommend you a, a qualified bank that is going to help you get those loans. Uh, but I do encourage you to apply. And there's also this relief fund. Also, this that's a 30-year from the SBA. It's a 30-year uh, uh, loan. A very low interest. So if you if you don't feel comfortable applying for the PPP, you can always apply for that relief relief loan uh, that that is is a very low interest, a 2.7 percent interest for uh, 30 years. So it's it's you know it's not free money, but it's it's something that's going to help you, you know, come back and put your business together and and you know make sure you open it the right way. And so looking at a loss of income, we we spoke about the payroll protection program through the federal government. But Director Ruiz, um, in filing the claims that some small business owners are going to have to do because their, their organization has suffered loss, are they able to ask their insurance company about their loss of income as well um, in regards to um, the recent crises? Yes, they can certainly ask, and there is a type of uh, insurance that many business owners uh, add on to their business insurance policy called business interruption. Uh, this may provide income. Uh, you can look on our website, because I know uh, it can be hard to take all this in, iii.org. The Insurance Information Institute is all about helping people understand insurance, what it does, how it works, and it's front and center on our website right now. But it's called Business Interruption Insurance. About 40% of businesses take this, take advantage and put this coverage on their business insurance policy. It can pay for the loss of income uh, while you're shut down. It can also pay for things like uh, compensation, payroll for your employees as well. So it's a great coverage to have and many people do. Um, so again, it's called business interruption and check your policy to see if you signed up for that or consider adding it on if uh, moving forward because it really does make a difference when you have a physical damage loss like this to your business and you can't reopen right away 
Oh, maybe you even have to move to another space. Um, and so that's going to be an extra expense that could also be covered under your business interruption. So it's a really important coverage to have and uh, I highly suggest it for businesses. For the sake of time, we only had a few minutes left and I was just making certain that we covered um, the questions that was sent. We were just answering the questions as we were going along, which was phenomenal. I wanna also remind the participants that um, information that we provided during this webinar, we will be providing the recording as well as um, information that was provided. So if you register for this webinar, you will receive that information through your email. I just wanted to um, make certain that I had included just about everything that people had asked. Um, someone did ask a question about our portfolio, what the city is investing in. I just want to remind the participants that on Monday, June 29th, the last Monday of this month, we are going to have a special Money Mondays with Melissa series where we're going to provide a financial update from the city treasurer's office. And so you will receive more information at that time specific to the portfolio um, of taxpayers. Um, but in final, in closing, is there anything else that, um, I'm looking at the questions here, I think that is just about everything. But if there is follow-up questions, people know how to certainly contact our office. Anything that our guests, our panelists on today um, want to touch on that maybe we did not, we were not able to cover or something you felt needed to be reiterated. And I'll start with you this time, um, Director Ruiz. Thank you, Madam Treasurer. I think it's wonderful that you've taken the time to help the city of Chicago in such a great way because uh, money matters are important and they're behind everything we do and especially in recovery. Um, so again, I'm proud to be a part of the insurance industry and the financial realm that can give back to the community uh, in such a way. And, you know, we've seen throughout COVID-19, the insurance industry gave oh, almost $15 billion back to auto insurance policyholders to help with their premiums and uh, moving forward and acknowledge that they were driving less. So we really do want to be a part of the financial recovery of Chicago. And thank you again, Madam Treasurer. Really appreciate you including us. Thank you so much. You were so very helpful and very timely. We needed to talk about that, Director Ruiz, so thank you. Representative Buckner, anything that you want to add before we conclude today? Yeah, I'll just, I'll just echo what, what Jenny just said. This is such an important conversation, and I want to thank you for, for elevating the conversation. I, I know that um, you know, the treasurer has three functions, right? You're, you're, you're the, the, the banker, the investor, and, and the advocate. Uh, the advocacy piece is so important as we figure out how we move forward as a community, as a, as a city, as a society. Um, and we have to have these, uh, these very, um, I think, uh, intentional conversations about our work and how to make tomorrow better than, than today. So thank you for all you do. And I'm looking forward to continuing to work with you guys. Thank you, Representative. And I appreciate that you continue to take the stands that you are taking. Um, please continue to stay encouraged. And I like the way you're partnering with those of the same mindset so that you can get work done. And what a lot of people don't realize is that in Springfield, in order to get things done, you have to work together. I would always tell people, I am one of 118 state, representative, state representatives. That means that I can't get anything done by myself. One of 118. I need at least 59 other people that will agree with me on some legislation and sometimes even more than that, right? <laughs> absolutely, you're absolutely right. Uh, so uh, CEO, DiPaolo, uh, great information on today. Anything that you want to add or reiterate before we conclude? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you so much for the invite. Uh, I really, truly appreciate the, 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 the opportunity. And just to remind folks that anytime there's a crisis, it's an opportunity. And, 
you, if you need help reinventing yourself, if you think you're not going to make it in your business, think twice and, and start thinking positively and how you can re, re, relocate, reinvent, or regenerate your business. For example, I have a restaurant that converted, you know, he, he found it so profitable doing the deliveries and, and he, he made a grocery, a high-end grocery store on the, you know, where he used to sit people. So this is the guy that was thinking, you know, outside of the box. So think like that and we are going to come back and we are going to come back stronger and more organized. So thank you so much for the opportunity. Awesome. Thank you so much. And again, I just want to remind everyone that we do this every Monday at 12 noon. And so I encourage you to invite others, um, those that you know this information can be very helpful for. We want this, this webinar can hold a, a lot of people. And so we just want to make certain that people that need this resource um, are receiving it. And so that really concludes our time on today. Thank you everyone again for tuning in to Money Mondays with Melissa. Um, and we just want to especially thank our guests. We know that everyone really are very busy right now at this time, but they took time out of their busy schedules to attend this webinar and provide this helpful information. We will be sharing the notes and materials, as I mentioned, with everyone via email. And I always encourage you to follow us at chicagocitytreasurer.com on our website where you'll find a wealth of information. Also, if you wanna sign up for our weekly newsletter, we're always, always sending out information as to what we're doing, what's going on. You can sign up for our weekly newsletters through chicagocitytreasurer.com website as well. Of course, we're on Facebook as Shy Treasurer as well as Twitter. Um, thank you, everyone, and continue. We'll continue this series of Road to Recovery for the next couple of weeks. Everyone stay safe. Enjoy this beautiful weather, but please stay safe and properly social distance. Thank you. Wonderful. This concludes today's webinar. Thank you all for attending. You may now disconnect.